Hi, everybody. Chuck here. Happy Saturday. Do you want to know how chili peppers work? Because we did, and we learned. This is from September 10th, 2015, how chili peppers work. It's hot stuff. Welcome to Stuff You Should Know, a production of iHeartRadio. Hey, and welcome to the podcast. I'm Josh Clark. There's Charles W., Chuck Bryant, and Jerry. And that makes this Stuff You Should Know. I was so going to quote the Red Hot Chili Peppers, the band. They apparently used them at um, Guantanamo Bay to torture prisoners. Really? Yeah. That surprises me. I know. Usually that's like, uh, I've heard of stories like that, but usually it's some kind of dark metal or something like super... Well, Starland some, vocal band. Some might say abrasive. Some might think it's very soothing to hear death metal. Supposedly, there's a study out there that had a ridiculously small uh, study population that found that it's calming. It has a calming yeah. influence. Metal music does. Paid for by the Metal Association of <laughs> North America. <laughs> right. The Scandinavia. Uh, yeah, I'm kind of surprised they play the Chili Peppers. It's, uh, it's pretty easy on the ears, isn't it? Uh, well... One of the songs was Californication. Uh, the other later stuff isn't as good. Yeah. I could go a little crazy with that one. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'll talk. What were you going to quote? I was going to say, give it away, give it away now, or something like that. Oh, or yeah. or uh, fight like a brave. I haven't heard that one. That's early stuff. Or you could just say, like, under the bridge downtown. Yeah. <laughs> I ate a chili pepper. I actually read his uh, <clears throat> biography. I guess it was an autobiography, Anthony Kiedis, because I went Was he it. writing about himself? Yeah, I was, I was just going through a kick where I was reading music autobiographies of for just rock star stories. Didn't you this recommend the, the Motley Crue biography? Oh, there's just the best. <laughs> Which one was it? Uh, there's one um, quintessential one. I can't remember what it's called. The Quintessential Crew. Yeah, just look. I mean, it's that's not an autobiography. That's just a biography. Yeah. But that one's really good. The Slash one is good. And the Kiedis one is good, man. He, that guy, he had troubles. Oh, yeah? Just bad drug troubles uh, and woman troubles over and over and over. Huh. But he's good now. Well, good for him. Yeah. Welcome back to the fray, Anthony Kiedis. <laughs> That's what I say. So we're not talking about the red hot chili peppers. We're talking about red hot chili peppers. <laughs> right. Not the. <laughs> <clears throat> right. We're talking about chili peppers, uh-huh. depending on where you are in the world, C-H-I-L-I peppers or C-H-I-L-E peppers. Or just chilies. Yeah, you could say that. I think a lot of chefs just call them chilies. Well, yeah. Because they're like, they don't waste words. No, they don't say peppers. It's a couple extra syllables. <laughs> yeah, exactly. No, chef. Give me some of those chilies. Uh, it is uh, the bell pepper and the... The celery stalk and the onion is part of the uh, trinity of, I guess you would call it, Nolan's cooking. Sure. And the bell pepper is a chili pepper. It's just um, a non-hot chili pepper, but it's still the same thing. Yeah. Um, and it turns out that we get that terminology, chili, it actually was used by the Aztecs or the Triple Alliance in Mesoamerica. The Triple Lindies? The Triple Alliance. Oh. Prior to the arrival of Columbus, and it was Columbus himself where we get the the um, misnomer chili pepper. Because Columbus... He's a big dummy. Could that guy get anything right? No. So he comes across the chili pepper and decides that it must be a relative of the black pepper with which he and the rest of Europe are already very familiar. Sure. So he calls it the chili pepper because he hears up in Mexico they call it Chilies. Yeah. That's what the Triple Alliance calls it. Yeah. So that's where it came from, chili peppers. But it has no relation whatsoever to the chili or the pepper, the black pepper. Yes. Um, and it's been around. It's actually one of the oldest domesticated crops in the Americas, actually. Yeah. It started out in South America about uh, 6,000 years ago. I saw 9,000. I'm going to say between 5 and 12. <laughs> okay. <laughs> uh, and they don't know whether it was Bolivia or Brazil. There's a heated debate in the pepper community uh, on the country of origin. But they do know that birds are the ones who disperse <clears throat> them, and birds can't feel heat in their mouth. So right. they carry them around and propagate the seeds. And uh, then Columbus, of course, 
uh, brought them to Europe, and that's how things spread. That's why you can use hot sauce or chili pepper spray or something like that on your bird seed to deter squirrels. Yeah. Because the birds are fine. Yeah, but those squirrels those hate Those squirrels it. just <laughs> run around going, hot, 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 hot. And it says here the uh, birds can't digest pepper seeds, but nobody can really digest pepper seeds if I they're can. Uh, whole. I totally can. No, you can't. I will show you right now. You're going to show me your stool? <laughs> Uh, no, we can't digest them either because we don't digest seeds uh, that aren't chewed because they're covered in cellulose and it just goes straight through to our poop. Exactly. Same with corn. Yeah. Because that is a seed. It is. That's I'm right. glad you finally said that. Somebody needed to say it. <laughs> I think that's one of the trendy facts, don't you think? Was that corn is a seed? Yeah. Yeah, probably. Seems like I saw that all over the internet. It's pretty hot right now. Corn and poop. <laughs> it's a hot topic. So um, I did a don't be dumb on that. On hot topics? <laughs> Man. No? Corn? Corn and your poop. Yep. Yeah. See? Hot topic. So um, Columbus brings this stuff back, and it spreads like crazy. Like syphilis. Yeah, because think about this. Um, chili peppers were are native to the Americas and were unknown outside of the Americas until about 500 or so years ago. Yeah. Now they're grown in just about every country in the world. Yeah. Um, there's all different types of varieties. Um, but it turns out that there's 25 wild species and five domesticated species. And one of the um, noteworthy things about chili peppers uh -huh. is most of the time when humans domesticated a wild crop yeah they would stop using the wild version of it because it was just so far inferior to the domesticated version right not so with with um chilies yeah wild chilies are just as prized if not more prized than the domesticated ones they're delicious <clears throat> so there's five species chuck and by the way chili peppers belong to the nightshade family yes with potatoes tomatoes goji berries eggplants and nightshade yep and um the five species are fun to say. Yeah, I, I wasn't even going to do it, but I encourage you to. Okay. Uh, capsicum annuum, capsicum chinese, chinese, mm -hmm. capsicum frutescence, capsicum baccatum, and capsicum pubescence. Those have little hairs on them. Yeah. <laughs> I saw that one coming. <laughs> <laughs> so those are the five families. Uh, peppers are uh, generally hot, although we'll get into all that with the varieties. Like you said, mm -hmm. the bells, everyone knows bells aren't very hot. Right. But um, what you're talking about with the heat is what's called their pungency. And the heat actually uh, comes from alkaloids present in the peppers called capsaicin. Yes. Which we talked about in December of 2011. With, with pepper our, spray? Uh, pepper spray episode. Yeah. Because that's, that's what they're using in pepper spray. If you didn't listen to it, go check it out. It's a good one. But, uh, yeah, it's kind of funny to think about a defense, self-defense tool is really just uh, canned hot pepper. Yeah, because that stuff can be... It works. <laughs> yeah, it <laughs> really does work. Um, and with, with the, uh, the pungency of a pepper, most people think that it's found in the seeds. That's actually a myth. Well, it is found in the seeds. It's not housed in the seeds. Right. So the seeds are attached to the pepper itself through something called the placenta. Yeah. It's a membrane, that white stuff that's inside of a pepper, right? Yep. <clears throat> and that's where the capsaicin um, is is stored. Yeah. Um, and since the seeds are attached to the membrane, a lot of that stuff makes it way, its way to the seeds. But if you really want the high heat, you eat the membrane. If you want, want the high heat, just eat the whole thing. I de-seed and de-membrane mine. But uh, if you're looking for heat, then just don't even sweat it. Literally, don't sweat it. That's Yeah, that's like the second at least pun that you've made. Oh, yeah? Yeah. What was the first one? Something was... They were both accidental. Hot. I can't remember what it was. Oh, well, those are just words. No, it was perfect. <laughs> it was really great. Uh, so the, the, the pain is actually not coming from your taste buds because they don't feel pain. Uh, it's coming from, uh, pain receptors in your mouth and it sends a message to your, to your brain saying, this is super hot. I wouldn't eat that much unless you like it. Right. It's the same pain receptors that, um, tell you that 
say uh, the sip of coffee you just took is too hot. Yeah. Or <clears throat> like something is thermally too hot. It's triggered by capsaicin. It's the TRPV1 receptor. And that triggers the release of a neurotransmitter called substance P. And that's, Which capsaicin can also block. What's crazy is yes. So the the it's well, we'll talk about it a little more later. But capsaicin is used as a topical pain reliever, right? Yeah. Like Shaquille O'Neal knows that. Is he? Is he? Uh, I think like icy hot. Those? Yeah. Oh really? Um, so capsaicin, if you rub it on the skin, <clears throat> it goes to those TRPV1 receptors, and basically overloads them so thoroughly that they're no longer able to transmit the sensation of pain yeah. in that area. So it's a local anesthetic. Yeah, it's pretty cool. Yeah, it is. Uh, and lots of other health benefits that we'll talk about. Yeah. Peppers are great for you. Peppers are super. Uh, they do not cause ulcers. Uh, that is a myth. Um, and, in fact, they protect the stomach lining, or can. Yeah. And they can also thin the blood. So you need to watch out for that if you are on an anticoagulant. Yeah. I don't know if they say that on the prescription or not, but... Oh, the pepper prescription? No. <laughs> I prescribed you 10 jalapenos <laughs> today. Right. Uh, no, the anticoagulant prescription, of course. It might. Uh, but if you are in a contest or just at dinner and your mouth becomes inflamed, um, don't – well, you can drink water. I think it, it provides pretty a, stupid. a temporary – Respite. I don't know if it even does that. It does for me. It basically moves the stuff around and throughout your mouth. Yeah. Which is yeah. not good. What you want is something fatty. Yeah. Like uh, milk. Yeah, because capsaicin dissolves in the presence of fats. Or like um, if you eat a lot of Mexican food or Indian food, um, that, that sour cream and that yogurt is yep. a nice way to smooth that out. That's what it's there for, baby. Well, that in taste and... And uh, flavor and texture and everything else. Yeah, I guess so. Yeah, <laughs> it's not like they're like, you know, let's add some sour cream because this is too hot. Right. But it definitely helps. I read a, a article actually with a guy who was in a contest, and he was a, a hot pepper guy, and he described. Mm -hmm. I think he ate like three ghost peppers mm -hmm. just in twenty seconds. Yeah. And he was fine at first. Then it got hot. Like, in a, not in his mouth, but in his throat. Yeah. And then um, it, he just kept going through waves. Like, he said it would go away, and I thought I was good. And then he was like, an hour later, it felt like a red-hot burning nickel <laughs> on my sternum. And it was just moving its way down, I guess. Man. And then he said he felt jubilation, like exhilaration, which we'll talk about. That's one of the effects of peppers. It can, you know, pick up your mood. But he said he was just like, felt like he was on cocaine. Weird. Yeah. Yeah, because they trigger a release of endorphins. Exactly. So you can get a runner's high or some sort of high off of eating peppers. A cocaine high. <laughs> which is why some people eat peppers. They It really makes them feel great. Yeah, I guess this guy wasn't a runner. He must have just done some cocaine before in his life. <laughs> right. Because <laughs> that was his go-to. And um, so you said that birds are immune to the effects of peppers, and they also spread the seed by pooping it out, right? Yeah. Um, mammals are not immune to the effects of it, including humans. And apparently humans are the only mammals that purposefully eat peppers. And it's been called a, a form of benign masochism. Oh, really? Yeah. Interesting. But it makes sense if um, – and the reason why they think peppers have that kind of burning thing is is to protect itself, to yeah. ward off mammals from eating it. Sure. Um, but the uh, the idea that we can get some sort of rush from it is kind of counterintuitive if you think about it. As far as evolution goes from the pepper standpoint. Sure, it, yeah. Because that encourages people to keep eating you. Yeah, that's a good point. Uh, all right, well, let's take a break here, and we'll come back and talk a little bit about uh, how the heat is measured in a hot pepper. Stop. You, you, you know. Stop. 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 You should know. Know. <laughs> All right. I guess we need to talk about uh, Wilbur Scoville, Mr. Scoville. Doc well, was he a doctor? No, he was a pharmacist. Yeah, but I wondered if he was a doctor. <clears throat> I think he got an honorary doctorate. He deserved one. You count those? Uh, sure. All right. Probably depends on where it's from, what it's for, but sure. Yeah, I, never... I, I would. 
Oh, of course you would. If I got one, I'd be like, you can call me <laughs> Dr. Mr. Clark. Dr. Mr. Uh, he was a pharmacist, like you said, who developed um, something called the Scoville uh, Organoleptic Test in 1912. <laughs> and uh, what? It's just a hilarious name for what it is. Oh, it is kind of weird, isn't it? You should have just called it the Chili Test or something. It just made me laugh like a goon. <laughs> Well, previous to this test, um, the only test was basically just to have people eat them and ask them how hot they thought it. Yeah, basically. It's pretty hot. <laughs> okay, that's a pretty hot pepper. Give me some milk fat. <laughs> right. <laughs> Technically, <laughs> pork fat, whatever. You just eat a slab yeah. of fat and it get rid of it real quick. Yeah, they said chocolate, too, will help. Yeah, well, it's a fatty. Yeah. Full of lipids. I think that's people just like to eat chocolate <laughs> with their, with their right. hot stuff. Uh, so Schofield says, there's got to be a better way. And he says, why don't we devise a test where we have people eat peppers and ask them how hot it is? <laughs> <laughs> Pretty much. But let's do it in a little bit different way. Let's keep feeding them peppers that are more diluted until they can't feel heat any longer. Right. And just make it a little more organized and formal. So the Scoville, the Scoville heat unit is what it comes up with, right? Yes. So, for example, a bell pepper has a zero. Not hot. But say a habanero, some types of habanero peppers can get up to like 500,000. Yeah. Um, I think the red something, oh, what is it? I'm sorry, the red Savinia habanero pepper got up to 570,000 Scoville heat units. Yeah. It's very hot. And what that means is that it would take 570,000 cups of water to dilute one cup of extract from the red Savinia habanero. And one shot of milk fat. Right. Before <laughs> before anybody could say, I detect no heat whatsoever. Yeah. That's, so that's a lot what of water. The, yeah, it's a tremendous amount of water. And it's not like he was pouring a whole cup of this stuff into 570,000 cups of water. It's math. I think he just used fractions. Yeah, probably so. Yeah. Although it took you never me a minute know. to come to that conclusion. I was like, <laughs> what kind of vat did this guy have in his yard? A big one. Uh, so that was the, the old test, um, and even though they no longer use that, <clears throat> they still use that SHU Scoville heat unit as the unit of measure, which I think is a nice little tip of the cap. It is. Because they could have changed it. Wilbert Scoville's ghost is like, I approve. <laughs> uh, now what they do is use uh, liquid chromatography, uh, and they've been doing that since about the 70s, and <clears throat> that's not specific to testing peppers. It's basically just uh, separating and analyzing compounds of any mixture. Right, but you can target the specific type of compound, and in this case, you're looking for the alkaloid capsaicin. Yes. And you determine how many parts per million is present in a, a given pepper, and it takes the subjectivity out. Yeah, and it's literally just measuring the level capsaicin level in any pepper. But what's neat is they figured out Scoville was clearly onto something because they figured out that if you take this high performance liquid chromatography measurement yeah. and multiply the number it spits out by sixteen, uh -huh. you will come to the Scoville unit. So that, he was off by sixteen? <laughs> yeah, by a factor of sixteen. It's not bad. But that's neat that you can it's not like 16.9857 or something like that or sure. off, or multiply it by the, – the fact that you can multiply it by a standard number and come to the Scoville heat unit each time. It means he was doing something right. Some, there's something there. Yeah. Scoville. Way to go. <laughs> that sounds like one of the uh, real men of genius commercials or something. <laughs> right. uh, I guess – well, should we get to some of the types of peppers now? Are we there? Yeah. Yeah? Yeah, I think so because – the, if you're a scientist, there's two ways to classify a pepper. By its heat, using the Scoville heat unit index. Yeah. And by its shape. Yes. And then color. Well, apparently scientists don't classify them by color. I'm talking about you and me, buddy. Hotheads. We're in the kitchen. <laughs> okay. And we're, and we're looking at peppers. Yeah. And we're like, look at that red one. Look at that green wrinkly one. All right. That one's shaped funny. <laughs> right. That's a funny shape. That's how we classify it. Red funny shaped one. It's uh, really hot. <laughs> wrinkly or smooth is another thing you might notice. But uh, you're right. As far as science is concerned, it's heat and shape. And then the shapes go from shape A to shape I. Right. And uh, my favorite descriptor is the lantern shape. I think that's great. Yeah, that's the habanero. Yeah. Very thin skinned uh, and very hot. Yeah. Can you, can you eat peppers? We should, I didn't even ask this. I eat a lot of peppers. Um, my heat tolerance isn't 
great. I do like the heat, but I'm a bit of a wimp. So, like, what what kind of pepper do you normally eat? Can you eat, like, a scotch bonnet? Well, I mean, I cook a lot with just mm-hmm. bells, of course. That doesn't count. Sure they do. Okay. Because they're peppers. All right. Um, so I cook a lot with those, but um, I cook a lot with poblanos, anaheims, chipotles, jalapenos, serranos. And a chipotle is... Is it Chipotle? You just threw me off. It's Chipotle. Chipotle. Chipotle is a smoked habanero. Right. Yeah. And ancho is a dried serrano? Ancho is dried poblano. That's right. Uh, Ancho powder. Yeah. That's from Puebla, Mexico. Right. Uh, Poblanos are great if you want to make a good chili relleno. Oh, yeah. Because they're about the right size, and they're really just hearty, thick, waxy. They hold up well. Yeah. You mean I are aficionados of those things. Of the poblano? No, of the chili relleno. Oh, yeah. Find a good one of those. Yeah, you know it's funny. In uh, college, you know, I worked at Mexicali Grill, uh-huh. which I don't think is even a thing anymore. Oh, really? I know the one on Atlanta Highway closed, which was I'm very, very sad. I'm very surprised. It was an institution. Sure. Uh, and their chili relleno, like a lot of the, uh, when you go to some, you know, kind of the cheaper Mexican places that have like the menu with 80 combination uh-huh. dinners. A lot of times you'll find a chilarina, which is a ball of beef uh, wrapped in cheese sitting on top of a one-inch square b- green bell pepper. <laughs> I've not seen that one. Yeah, that was what our chilarina was. Man, it was basically be... just meat and cheese. Man, no. But you want the real thing, which is stuffed in a real pepper. Uh-huh. And a lot of people use breading. Yeah. Unnecessary. I, I, I can have it both ways. It's Well, it's supposed to have some sort of uh, fried wrapper around it. And the breading is usually too much. The better way to do it is like a thin omelet, almost like a crepe around it. Uh, Every once in a while you run into that. Those Those are so good. Yeah. Man. Good stuff. All right. Well, let's back up then. Okay. Back to the bells, which you don't consider peppers, evidently. (laughs) Well, I mean, as far as you're talking heat is concerned. Yeah, no heat. But they're great to grill. And And I can't say anything. I can't really go beyond a a jalapeno. Oh, you can't stand the heat? No. So I'm frequently getting out of the kitchen. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> but I actually made a, a New Year's resolution to eat more hot stuff because I, I realized, like, I'm such a total wuss when it comes to this. I yeah, need to, I think like, you can build up a tolerance for sure. <clears throat> and I have. I've gotten much better at, yeah. like, eating spicy stuff. But, yeah, if I, like, a habanero is way too hot for me. It depends on what kind of spice it is, too, a lot of times. I'm more mm-hmm. tolerant of some than others. But I've learned that once you get past that, the very unpleasant, painful sensation, mm-hmm. there's like a whole new world of tastes out there. Yeah. You know? Yeah, good point. Uh, so the bells are the little squatty squatty dudes. Um, they can be, uh, I don't know if a lot of people know this, all the different colors of the bell pepper is the same pepper. The red bell, the green bell, the yellow bell, the, the orange bell, it's all the same. But they taste differently. Uh, yes, because they're, it's how long they're ripened. So what? Th- the green one is ripened uh, or harvested first. Wait a minute, wait a minute. Wait it's all the same pepper. Wait a minute, hold on. That's why you'll get a red pepper that still has a little green buddy, like uh, a little patch of green. Oh, wait a minute. <laughs> hold on. So you didn't know this? No. Wow. All right, well, that didn't happen much. For real? Yeah. Well, that's great, man. Thank yeah. you for teaching us that. So the, <laughs> the green pepper is, is picked first. That's why they're less expensive, too. Um, huh. And they are uh, a little bitter, and they are not nearly as sweet. Then you have yellow, then orange, then red as they ripen. And that's why the red is most expensive, uh-huh. and it's because it's the most uh, mature. It's delicious. It is delicious. And they are sweet and kind of fruity. <clears throat> um, but have you, you ever can, smoked one? Uh, We're not smoked when... Um, roasted? Yes. Oh, I do it all the time. And then you just peel the skin off? Yeah, what I do, this article says to do it in the oven. I either put it on the grill, mm-hmm. I do it with fire. Yeah, fire works real well. Or just on the stove, I'll just put it on the, yeah. the You got thing a gas stove? Got a gas stove. Sure. No, it's a uh, convection. <laughs> <laughs> you just put like an old piece, piece of notebook paper on it? <laughs> Roast your pepper over that? <laughs> Yeah, I'll just throw the red pepper on the fire until it's all black, and then I throw it in a uh, paper bag. I don't do paper because I don't usually you do have plastic? paper bags. Yeah, I'll just put it in like a, a grocery store bag. That seems carcinogenic. Uh, no, I don't think so. You should. <laughs> well, we'll find out. <laughs> yeah, check back with me in twenty years. <laughs> well, because you then you I run into the sink and wash all that char off of it, so I don't think it's coming to contact what you're eating with the plastic. Right. So you use the sink, huh? 
Yeah, just because it's really hot to the touch still. Oh, well, that, that's the other thing that I noticed in this article. It says leave it for like 15 minutes, which seems smart. I don't ever have time for that. Gotcha. So I just put it under the cold water, get all the seeds in the membrane and the skin off. Got you. And then slice it up and throw it in a salad. It I'd is say. delicious, man. It's very delicious. Yeah. Uh, but the, uh, okay, the red pepper has more because it's matured longer. Right. Has 11 times more beta carotene than green and one and a half times more vitamin C. So they're healthier. That's what you're paying for, the beta carotene. That's right. Big money in beta carotene. <laughs> right. Uh, and then you can also have chocolate, uh, purple, and even white bell peppers. And This is, you, now you're just lying. <laughs> no, I think those are just different varieties, though. I don't think those are like how mature they are. Like the white ones are grown. In the dark or something like that? I don't know. I have no idea. Huh. Um, the pimento and paprika are both where you, uh, they come from red bells, though. Gotcha. And paprika is Well, then smoked. how is, how is that, how does that have any kind of, paprika has a little bit of heat to it, doesn't it? Uh, no. No? I'm thinking of cayenne pepper. Yeah, cayenne is made from hot red chilies. Yeah. And paprika is just smoked. Unless it's Hungarian paprika, and that's sweeter, and that's not smoked. Gotcha. So if you see a recipe that says paprika, you should probably know whether it's smoked or Hungarian. Yeah. And if not, I would probably just go with Hungarian. Oh, you think? Well, unless you just know you want a smoky flavor. Gotcha. Whew, this has been quite a roller coaster. <laughs> Banana peppers, very mild. Pepperoncinis, very mild. Yeah. You get those on uh, your Subway sandwich? Yeah, yeah. The, or, or like as a side on a Papa John's pizza? Oh, yeah. Like something like that? That's right. I knew I'd seen those. And then, of course, the best one of all, the poblano pepper. Right. Uh, and then the pimento, which we just mentioned, and that is a variety of the red bell, I think, and that's what they put in olives. Yeah. And cheese. Right. What about the hot guys? See, I don't mess with them that much, but yeah. Like we said, there's jalapeno, serrano, habanero, chipotle. So it is chipotle. Yeah. What do you think it was? We were saying chipotle. Or were you saying chipotle? I was saying chipotle. I've always said that. And then Anaheim. Anaheim. Yeah, I think some people transpose the L and say chipotle. Yeah, they definitely do. So I, chipotle. And I got confused. I know how to say it right, but earlier I was like, wait, that didn't sound right. Yeah. Uh, and then, of course, you have the delicious Thai chilies or bird's eye chilies. Mm -hmm. And those are really good and super hot. Mm -hmm. And they are small and thin, but pack a punch. So normally the rule of thumb is uh, thin, long ones yeah. that are red are going to be your hottest. Yeah. Right? Yeah. But there's exceptions to those rules. Which is the scotch bonnet? Scotch bonnet is like a, it's is like it even, it's like more pumpkin shaped. It's like a uh, habanero. Okay. But it's even, it's less lantern shaped and more pumpkin shaped. And I think it's like a yellow, yellow orange and it's very hot. Okay. Very frequently found in like Jamaican cuisine. Oh. <clears throat> the scotch bonnet. Gotcha. <laughs> uh, if you dry the pepper out and you have like the ancho pepper, the chipotle uh, dried stuff that we we're talking about. Yeah, it's gonna be hotter. So yeah. keep that in mind. Some people who like peppers will just put them in a food dehydrator and eat them like that. Yeah, yeah. Whole or thing. just let them just dry out in your in the sun. Sure. If you're if slack, <laughs> if you're a hippie, Chuck. We also said that. So if you're a scientist, you say uh, this pepper is shape A and has a Scoville rating of five trillion, right? Okay. Um, then you've just described a pepper to another scientist. They know what you're talking about. <laughs> sure. But there's a, something called the Chili Pepper Institute. It's an institute that's associated with the University of New Mexico. And New Mexico, by the way, is the, the foremost domestic producer of chili peppers in the United States. Correct. Thanks to a man named Fabian Garcia. Correct. Who was a pioneer in cultivating peppers here in the United States. Yeah. And in 1921, he released his first variety, the New Mexico Number no. 9. I thought you were going to say his first album. Mambo number no. five? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, but he's like known as the father of 
chili peppers in the U.S. Yeah, the North American chili. And in India, they are um, they're the world's largest producer of chilies. Oh yeah, by far. Yeah, um, but there's a, so there's another way to describe them beyond shape, color, and heat. And the Chili Pepper Institute came up with this. It's for the heat profile, and basically there's five components to the heat profile. Um, there's the the heat, the Scoville heat unit to it. Yeah. Um, then there's how fast it hits. Yeah, that's a big one. Like you were saying, that guy who ate some ghost chilies, mm-hmm. um, that they were kind of like it, it took a minute to come on. He's like, this isn't so bad. <laughs> There's some peppers that hit like immediately. Yeah. So that would be the second descriptor, the second component. Um, the third would be whether it lingers or dissipates quickly. Sure. Or how fast it dissipates. Eventually, it's going to dissipate. You hope. Yeah, and then come and burn the next day, coming out the other end. <laughs> yeah. You know. Yeah. Uh, and then the fourth one is um, where it's sensed. Like, is it in the throat? Is it on your tongue? Is it in the roof of your mouth? Like, yeah. where does it attack, basically? And then the last one is whether it's flat or sharp. So flat is, say, um, I saw it in, a, I think, a, that New Yorker article. Yeah. Or maybe the Smithsonian one that I sent you. Um, flat is where it's like your whole tongue is just coated in the sensation of heat. Yeah. Whereas um, sharp is where it feels like little hot needles in your mouth or something like that. Mm. And the preference in America is for a flat sensation. Sure. Whereas Asian countries tend to, to prefer the sharp sensation. Oh, like the Thai chilies? Yes. Interesting. Sharp. That's right. Uh, do you like hot Asian food? Yeah. Yeah? Yeah. Um, I like curries and stuff like that. I, nothing too hot, though. Yeah. I mean, like, I'm still a pretty big wuss. No, I'm the same way. Um. And I, I'm also, like, comfortable enough with myself that I don't feel the need to show off. No. Or accept a dare. No, of course not. No. So, yeah, I don't need that hot of stuff. But I will sometimes. Yeah, if you're still accepting food-related dares in your late 30s or 40s, yeah. then you, you, I don't know, you should seek some help. Did you read about that guy, what, Ted Busser or Besser? Uh-uh. Oh, he was in the New Yorker article. He That's exactly what he does. How old is he? He's, uh, you know, 30s, 40s. <laughs> He's on YouTube. Seek some help, Dan. <clears throat> and he accepts um, challenges, food challenges. So people Ugh. send him, like, the most disgusting thing they can find, and then he eats it on, on air. But one of the things that he eats are, like, really hot peppers. And he's become kind of like a, uh, a de facto pepper judge. Right. Because there is this whole community out there. Oh, yeah. We'll, we'll talk about that after we take a break. How about that? All right. You, you, you know. Stop, stop, stop. You should know. know. So, Chuck, we kind of teased it. There's a, there's a community of chili pepper aficionados out there. Big tough, time. tough guys. And women. Yes. And yeah, they, I meant that in the uh, <laughs> non-gender specific. Yeah, and they range from um, just people who like to eat them to people who make their own hot sauce. To people who are competing by growing... Cultivators. The, yeah, the hottest peppers on the planet, literally. Yeah, and they, it gets pretty dicey. They get um, very competitive and very snippy from what I read Yeah, there's about, yeah. you know... Um, the legitimacy of the heat that they claim. Yeah. So there's this, again, a really great New Yorker article called The Fire Eaters from, I think, a year or two back. Yeah. And it gives a really great outsider's view of this community. And it is very snippy. Yeah. The, one of the problems is, is there is no official central body that says this is the hottest pepper on the planet. Well, Guinness does. Guinness does, and a lot of people defer to Guinness, but sure. some other people are like, Guinness doesn't yeah. they're, they're they know. They're just they're dilettantes. Yeah. What we need is a governing body that's dedicated only to chili peppers, not, well, not Guinness, right? Yeah, and one reason why is because it changes. Like, people are cultivating these things. There could be a new hot, hottest pepper every three months. Exactly. And Guinness isn't going to stay on top of that. Right. So they're just kind of like, why are you even talking to those guys? So some people do defer to Guinness because it is the closest thing that they have to um, a, a, a judgment saying this is the world's hottest and pepper. And people just like we're saying that. But um, the, the, there's no organizing central body that, that is dedicated to judging 
which is the hottest chili pepper. <laughs> and there should be. <laughs> there, according to these people, they could use it oh, big time. Of course. Time. They think the government should supply it. But they, they can't even decide on whether that the hottest pepper in the world should be its peak yeah. or what it averages, its mean. Yeah. So right now, um, Guinness goes by the mean. And as it stands in the world, the hottest chili pepper as of August 2013 is called the Carolina Reaper. Yeah, the HP22BNH7 out of Rock Hill, South Carolina. Yep, and the Carolina Reaper has an average, an average. Remember that um, Red Savinia habanero had 570,000 Scoville heat units? Yes. This one averages 1,569,300 Scoville heat units. That's right, and a peak of over 2.2 million. Yeah. And hats off to Ed Curry of Pucker Butt Pepper Company in uh, Fort Mill. He's he's a very South controversial Carolina. pepper grower. He is. He blended uh, the original crossbreed was between a ghost pepper, which was uh, the previous hottest pepper introduced to the North America in 2000, uh, the infamous ghost pepper, and then he uh, crossbreeded that with or bred that with a red habanero. So the the boot jalokia is the ghost pepper. It's from India. And from 2007 to 2013, it was the reigning champ. Yes. <clears throat> and from before that was that Red Savinia from 1994 to 2007. Again, that's as far as Guinness is concerned. Um, but there are peppers out there. There's the, um, oh, what's the scorpion one? The Trinidad Scorpion Butch Tea. Yeah. So that was actually grown by some guys in Australia who crossed a Trinidad Scorpion, which is already very hot with a pepper that was grown by a guy named Butch Taylor in, I think, Mississippi. He's yeah, right outside Australians of Baton Rouge. Are, uh, big on this, as it turns out. Yeah, big time. Yeah. Um, I think the thing is, like, if there's people who listen to, like, Front 242 and go boar hunting, if there's a larger population of them in that country, that, that country's going to be more likely to be into eating hot peppers. What's Front 242? They're like an industrial band. Oh, really? Yeah. What does that mean about me? Because I've never even heard of it. <laughs> you don't need hot hot peppers. Oh, okay. Yeah. Uh, there are some who claim, in fact, uh, a grower in Southern California says, I've had a, I had a pepper once that was over 3 million, but I don't even publish that stuff, he says, because it's a fluke. Right. So so that's the, that's the question. Like, should that one be considered the world's hottest pepper? Or should that plant have to, or that species consistently have to put out something at 3 million. Yeah. Or, or does it matter? <laughs> well, that's another question entirely. You know, can't we just, I know they get specific about it and they want their due, but it seems like we can just say all of these are, are very hot. Very, very hot. Yeah. You're welcome. Yeah. I don't know. It's scary stuff if you ask me. It is. Um, Christopher Guest should do a mockumentary about yeah. pepper hotheads. It's ripe for it. Uh, all right, so let's say you want to pick out a pepper at a grocery store. Look for firm skin. <laughs> Look for super bright colors. Yeah. Which, uh, I don't know. I'm pretty down on produce and big box grocery stores. Yeah. But if you go to a farmer's market, uh, and especially like a local farmer's market, you're going to see weird shaped super, super uh, bright colored peppers. Yeah, weird shaped is right, remember? Yeah. We've talked about this before. Grocery stores won't sell ones that are perfectly awesome and maybe even better tasting because they look weird. Right. That bell pepper looks like Richard Nixon. Throw it in the trash. Yeah, and it's like, oh, I'm not a crook. <laughs> um, the longer they ripen, the hotter they get. So like you said, the red ones, um, if the red ones still have a little green, they're not fully ripe yet, so they probably won't be as hot. But that's, that's the case with the bell probably anyway, so you're not looking for heat. Right. You're looking for sweet. Um, if you are cooking with peppers, uh, it says in here, like, be sure to wash your hands. Yeah. But what you really need to do if you're serious is wear gloves. Wear, um, wear doctor's, uh, what are they called? Rubber gloves. Yeah, rubber gloves. Um, because that is truly the only way, like, if you come into contact with your fingers and that membrane or those seeds, mm -hmm. you can wash your hands ten times. And... You forget, and like the next day, you will get an eye booger out. Oh, yeah. And you'll be like, what in the world? My or, eye's on fire. Or you take your contacts out and you go to put them in the next morning. Oh, I can't imagine. Like, oh. 
I cooked one night uh, some paella and used some hot peppers and did not wear gloves, and I went pee-pee later. Oh, no. I didn't think about it, and I had a, speaking of uh, syphilis, a burning sensation down below. <laughs> it was bad. That's how they simulate it for medical students. Oh, really? <laughs> It was bad, so I learned the hard way. Uh, I just got a box of those. Nit- is it nitrate gloves? Nitrate or nitrite? And I put one them... explodes, the other one's fine. I think. Well, I put them in the kitchen. I also wear a painter's respirator. When I'm... what kind of peppers are you working with? The you know the hot stuff, like when ghost I'm... peppers. No, but I cook with habaneros and stuff sometimes. Huh? And it's like it's nuclear. The fumes are. Yeah. It's like if you're over the sink cleaning them out and you're breathing it in. You'll you'll find yourself, or at least I do, coughing and uh, burning. So I will, I will wear the respirator and my gloves. I so um, you mean I would juice sometimes. Oh yeah. And every once in a while, she'd put like a pepper in there, like a jalapeno. Oh, interesting. And it would just turn the kitchen into like a, like a tear gas bomb had gone off. Yeah. It's crazy. It gets everywhere. It does because these things are basically vaporized and they just spread so easily through the air. I never Capsaicin. thought about juicing a pepper. It. Definitely gives it a kick. <laughs> um, oh, if you want to store peppers, um, like we said, you can dry them out and they'll keep for a long time. Yeah, uh, they'll but keep. You don't want to wash them. You want to just put them unwashed into your fridge. Yeah, true. And they'll just keep. Just regular pepper peppers will keep for a long time. Right. It's not something that goes bad very quickly. But you can freeze them uh, if you slice them. Put them on a baking tray in the freezer. Yeah. Then you can collect them and just throw them in a bag, and you can keep them for like a year. Nice. Uh, but I don't see why you would freeze peppers. Just buy the amount you need and cook with them. Or pickle them. That's yeah. great. Pickled peppers are wonderful. I can just eat those straight. I don't like pickled things, so I'm not into it. But oh, joke. Yeah, I know. It's, it's so good for you. Pickling? Pickled foods are so good for you. They yeah. have so many health benefits. I, and I'll, I'll, I'll eat other tasty. healthy things that I enjoy. But how do you not like pickled stuff? Like I could eat pickled any – you could cut your finger off and pickle it. I'd probably eat it. How does anyone not like anything? But, I mean, like what about it? You don't like the tartness? No, just the, the taste. Anything pickled, like a pickled – a pickle? Sauerkraut? Ugh. You don't like sauerkraut? I hate sauerkraut. I guess I could have seen that coming dude, I if hate, you don't like pickled stuff. I hate pickled so much that – I have to ask and rest like when I go to a pub and have like a burger and fries to leave the pickle off yeah. because invariably they will put the pickle down soaking into the french fries in the bun yeah. and it will ruin that for me. Wow, you hate pickles that much? I hate pickles that much. Well, I'll <laughs> eat the pickles that you get on the side from now on, okay? Well, Emily eats the pickles. You can arm wrestle her for them. Okay, that's fine. That's a deal. Um, but when I said you shouldn't, you know, just buy them out, if you're growing pickles, or uh, I'm sorry, growing peppers, <laughs> got me on pickles. Pickled peppers. Then you might end up with a lot of peppers, and that's why you might want to uh, freeze pickle them. them. Or pickle them, yeah, if you're into that. Yeah. Because we grew peppers one year, and they, they were easy to grow and bountiful. Yeah. Pepper plant goes... Yeah. That equals a lot <laughs> of peppers. Uh, I guess we should talk about growing them a little bit, huh? I guess so. They're perennials. So that means they stick around. But well, it depends on where you live. Yeah, if it's cold, you might grow them as annuals. Right. They're pretty flexible. Um, you can start them as seeds 10 weeks prior to the first frost. You want to germinate them in little trays. First, yeah. you soak the seeds for a couple of days. Then you germinate them with a little bit of starter. Yep. 10 weeks prior to frost. After the, the last frost comes and goes, you can start to harden them by moving them outside a couple hours at a time. And talk to them, say, this is good for you. Right, this is for your own good Uh while you shake them. (laughs) Yep. Takes a couple of weeks, um, a few hours each day, more, until they are hard and ready. Right, and then they start to grow. You want to fertilize them. When the peppers grow out and turn hard, you can cut them. And when you do, you want to cut some stem because it extends their shelf life. And then you have peppers. You can also just go to the store and buy some peppers. Yeah. <laughs> if you're into gardening, garden. Yeah. If not, or... I'm just growing from seed, man. It seems like such a nightmare to me. Well, it's for people who have time and uh, well, are hobbyists. But I also get, like, if it's a very, like, if it's an heirloom something... Sure. Or just something you're not going to find anywhere... With peppers, I mean, sure, there are some. Like, if you want to buy the Carolina Reaper, you can get packs of those seeds for like ten bucks or something. Oh yeah. 
Right. You're not going to find those at any store. So no. I get growing those from seed. But like growing like a squash plant from seed, it's like, what are you doing, man? You got you should have better things to do with your time than that. We grew squash last year. From seed? Yeah. What are you doing, man? <laughs> we have a garden. Right, but you can just buy like the seedlings. Yeah, you could do that. Okay. Are you saying why do people garden? No, I love gardening. Okay. I'm just saying growing from seed, a plant. Like, if you like growing from seed, you should get a seed catalog and find something that you can't find elsewhere. That's what I'm saying. <laughs> I have a very strong opinion on growing things from yeah, seed. Yeah, so to each their own with everything but gardening. But gardening, right. <laughs> we, we, use, uh, we use starter plants a lot, too. Not, yeah. Not everything is from seed. Because you're sane, sensible people. <laughs> but uh, do, you, do you see my point? I guess. Do you get seed catalogs? They're uh, fun to look through. Not catalogs, I don't think, but we buy buy seeds online. You should get your hands on a seed catalog. Yeah? Yeah, I can't remember the name of the company. There's that sounds like that good get. toilet book reading. It, yes, it is. Yeah? It's just so, it, yes, it's very delightful. It makes you so excited for spring. Uh, off-label uses of peppers, we'll say. Yeah. You can eat them or... You can uh, rub them on your pain parts. Yeah, because remember, they <laughs> overload your nociceptor. That's right. Uh, they can lower your blood pressure. Uh, they can be anticoagulants, like I said. I think that's one and the same. Think about it. If it thins the blood, it's going to also like lower your blood pressure. Uh, true. I would think. Okay. It's also been shown, Chuck, it lowers bad cholesterol. Not, even, not just yeah. any cholesterol. It lowers your bad cholesterol and... Not only does it lower the the cholesterol pre- present in your blood, I think it attracts it, right? Because remember, it's fat soluble. Yeah. Um, and then it gets flushed out of the system. It actually removes the buildup of bad cholesterol plaque in your arteries. Man, this stuff is. It makes me want to eat more peppers. I already eat quite a bit of peppers. I need I'm to working. eat more. I think it's good. Uh, in the future, they hope to use it for um, cancer prevention. Uh, stroke, heart attack prevention. All right, you know, I guess it already works as that if it's lowering your blood blood pressure. That's what I got from that too. Yeah. But the cancer, it's its own thing. They found that, that capsaicin itself basically attacks tumors. Wow. I mean, that's... Are you upset about the growing from seed tirade? Oh, no, I don't care. Okay, good. What, like it was directed at me? Yeah, I didn't mean for it to be. No, not But at it all. took a pretty hard turn at the end there. No, no, no. Right, no. To, right to your front door. <laughs> I don't care. <laughs> right to your garden door. No, 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 no. Uh, we have an article called Can Ghost Peppers Kill You on our website. They and cannot. It's, it's not uh, good, um, but apparently three pounds um, of peppers can kill you. Is that right? Yeah. How? Like, what's the mode of death? I don't know. They don't say. That's why it's not a good article. Well, so these these pain receptors, the um, TRP... I mean, it's a toxin. Capsaicin is. TRPV1. Uh-huh. Um, they're also responsible for regulating your body heat, helping regulate your body heat. So I wonder if you have, like, a heat stroke or something like that. I don't know. I would just say it's a, if it's a toxin and you eat too much of any toxin, you could die. Yeah, but but there's... You know, you die from, like, some toxins slow your respiration and you stop breathing from lack of oxygen. You know what? I bet you it has something to do with respiration because uh, Mm. if you are in a hot pepper eating contest, one thing they will talk about is their throat swelling and having a hard time breathing. That would be my guess. I think they – I think there was a Science Daily article originally that said that. So there is a – speaking of ghost peppers, up until last year in 2014, there was a restaurant – in Grantham, Lincolnshire, which I'm, I take to, to be in England. Yeah, probably. Called Bindi. It was, the restaurant was named Bindi. It was an Indian restaurant. Um, and it had a curry called the Widower that used Ooh. 20 ghost peppers among oh a ton of other ones. Man. And apparently um, they had sold like five, 600 of them. And like about three quarters of the people finished it, managed to finish it. Not bad. Which, yeah, if you think, like, the ghost pepper, that was, like, the one that got all the press in 2007. I think what's remarkable is that people that are ordering this are probably have a very high tolerance anyway. Yeah. And if they're not able to finish it, that says a lot. Exactly. So that's chili peppers, everybody. Go forth and eat some. (laughs) 
Do I, you said that it doesn't give you ulcers, and in fact, it actually helps with cases of ulcers, right? That's right. Isn't that amazing? It is. Uh, okay, so if you want to know more about chili peppers, you can type that word into the search bar at HowStuffWorks.com, and it will bring up this article. And I said uh, search bar, so it's time for listen to me. Uh, I'm going to call this a rarely granted shout-out. We get requests a lot for shout-outs, and we couldn't do them all. Otherwise, our show would be called Shout-Outs You Should Know. But this one was from a 14-year-old girl who sounded very sweet, so I'm reading it. Hi, guys. I'm a 14-year-old girl who's been listening for a long time, and I wanted to say thanks for the time that you spend to make us smarter. Uh, It's been really fun for my sister, Anna, and I uh, to listen your podcast before we go to sleep however she is leaving for college soon to study studio art and i'll be all alone when i listen to you guys so if it isn't too much to ask could you give her a shout out and tell her that she is an awesome sister and will be missed oh uh sarah you could tell her that yourself too by the way you should express your emotions i don't like to talk uh you can also say uh to my brothers jonathan steven and tommy that they are okay too many kids are in this family Sounds like one, two, three, four, five. That was my guess, too. Uh, if you, oh, and she said no. Don't mention the sixth one. <laughs> Just kidding. Uh, if you do this, then you guys will be the best podcasters ever. Not like you aren't already. Uh, actually, Anna just sent an email, or maybe it's Anna, uh, to you guys last night about hula hoops. And uh, if you could put both our emails on the air, that would be the best. I'm not going to do that, no, Sarah. No, I'm not going to do that. But I did write her back. So um, this is a secret from Anna, so it would be a big surprise. So uh, Sarah, to Anna, Anna, good luck at college. You will be missed. You're a great sister. That is so nice, Chuck. And the brothers, Jonathan, Stephen, and Tommy, you guys are okay. (laughs) Man, that was nice. Very kind of you. You never know. Uh, Well, if you want to see if you can tug at Chuck's heartstrings, give her your best shot. Good luck. You can tweet to us at SYSK Podcast. You can join us on Facebook.com slash Stuff You Should Know. You can send us an email to StuffPodcast at HowStuffWorks.com. And as always, join us at our home on the web, StuffYouShouldKnow.com. Stuff You Should Know is a production of iHeartRadio. For more podcasts from iHeartRadio, visit the iHeartRadio app, Apple Podcasts, or wherever you listen to your favorite shows.